Hey you all, I hope your day is going great. Today we are going to be working on the functionality for removing expenses from our list. As you can see I'm in the project detail file and this is where we are going to be starting out because we have the close, you know, extra here which is where the user needs to click in order to remove the expenses. And for the ad tag we are going to add an onclick event. And this onclick event is going to call the function delete expense. And then we need to pass this function the current ID of the expense. So simply use the Django templating syntax and pass expense.id. Okay, now that we have that, we can scroll down and we have the script tag. So that's what we're going to use to put a code in. Create a function called delete expenses or delete expense, only one. And this one takes in the ID. And instead of using jQuery for simply, you know, sending a request to our views, we are going to use the fetch API, which is built in. And we need to fetch the current route. And then we need to pass some more things, such as the method, which is going to be called delete. There could be some minor problems arising with the method delete because it's not built in by default, but we'll handle that. And then the headers, we need to pass the x, csrf, token, and spit out the token, again, for the security measurement. And this has to be, you know, used with the delete method. It's just kind of a bug, I guess, where you have to pass the header instead of passing the actual token inside of the body. And then we can pass the body. And the only thing we need to pass in here is the ID. ID and pass that. And we need to actually call json.stringify. And last we want to pass the credentials as same origin. And this should be enough for our simple function. And now we can go into our viewstopy file. And check elif request.method is equal to delete. And again, this is inside of the project detail view, which is where we are going to be sending the delete request to, because that's just where our expenses sit. And as soon as that is hit, we want to first of all load the ID using json.loads the request.body. And then from that dictionary, we can just get the ID because that's the only thing we passed really. And then we want to set the expense equal to get object or 404 for the expense object where the ID is equal to the ID that was passed. And then we can just call expense.delete. And let's go to the top. And as you can see, I already imported JSON. So just type in import JSON. And then I already imported the HTTP response. And lastly, of course, we expect a response back and we can return an HTTP response, which is just empty. We don't need to give anything back and make sure your server is running. Now we can go to first web app and add a new expense. And I'm going to open up the console to see if there are any errors. And let's hit the X. Okay, nothing happened, of course, because we need to reload our page. And as you can see, the expense is gone. And what we now want to work on is making the expense delete as soon as we hit the X without, you know, needing to reload our page first. It would be kind of annoying, to be honest, if we are using the software. And to do that, we need to go back to the product detail.html and scroll up. And instead of passing the ID, we want to pass the object itself, which is the A tag. And then we can go down. So this one doesn't take the ID anymore. It takes the E, which is the element. And then the ID should be equal to 
set ID equal to E dot data set dot ID. And this is just a fancy way of basically how you would use jQuery with E dot data ID. It just gets the data attribute of the ID, which we of course have to associate with the a tag first. So we are going to set data ID equal to expense dot ID. So we have something to pass to our function. And that should work actually. So now let's go back and take care of removing the expense. And as you can see, we have the a tag. And up above that is the row. And then comes the card panel and then the li. And to get the li itself, we need to call e dot closest and simply type in li. And this should actually take care of it. And then we can call the dot remove method. Add a new expense. And now let's hit the X. And you can see it gets removed. Awesome, that's what we wanted. And this functionality should be done now. We're going to make some more tests. And yeah, it's working. And now we want to start working on these three boxes to display the correct information. Of course, this one already does it, but these two don't. But that will be quite easy. And we need to go up. And at this point, we want to... Oh, why did it select so weird? We want to say project.budget underscore left. And here we want to say project dot total underscore transactions. But of course these don't exist yet, so we are going to be creating them inside of models.py. We can create a new method called total transactions, checks in the self. And before that we need to create a method called budget left, checks in itself as well. And I think this one will be easier for now. So let's do that. And to get how many transactions we already did for this project, we of course just need to get all of the expenses and count them. And expense underscore list should be equal to expense dot objects dot filter, where the project is equal to self. Because again, the self is just the instance of the current project. And then we want to return the length of the expense list. And that was quite simple. And now for the budget left, we also need to get the expense list. And now instead of actually returning the length of the expenses, we want to return how much they add up to. And we are going to create a variable called total expense amount. Let's set it equal to zero. And for expense in expense list, the total expense amount should be incremented by expense dot. How was it called? Expense dot amount. And at the end, what we want to do is return the self dot budget, which is this field for the project, minus the total expense amount. Okay, and let's see that in action. Reload. And you can see 4,000 because we have a total budget of 5,000 and have only one expense of 1,000. So that then, you know, subtracts to 4,000 and we have only one transaction. And the dollar actually should be removed from there. And we can just add some more. Oh, marketing. 201 this time, and then the amount of 5,000. Of course, as you can see, the budget left is now in the negative space, and we want to give the viewer a kind of a clue of how much, you know, how well it's going simply by the color. And we can do that actually quite simple. So if the project.budget left is greater than zero, then, in this case, we want to spit out this h1. 
with the class of green. Again, that's from materialize. Actually, it's called green text. And if that is not the case, and if actually we can't, ah, oh, I guess yeah, we could add another else or oh, elif project dot budget left is equal to zero. Then we'll spit it out in orange text. And then we are going to be adding the else. And again, in this case, it's going to be in the negative space, so that's going to be red text. And we can reload. And that will be, of course, red. And let's remove this expense and reload the page. And it will be green again. Awesome. Let's just go back to our main screen. You can see that we don't really have anything going on here, although we already have a project. So that's what we are going to be working on in the next part. And also configuring this add project button. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode guys. Make sure to subscribe to not miss any videos in the future. And yeah, stay tuned. Cheers.